What's going on everybody, it's Buddy here. Today we're going to be replacing an AC condenser in our 2001 Chevy Blazer. This is going to be extremely similar to any Chevy around this year. I'm talking Silverado, Tahoe, Blazer, S10, Suburban, even some of the cars like a Malibu, Impala, Cavalier. This is going to be very similar. So by the end of this video, you're going to be confident enough that you're going to be able to do it by yourself. So let's get right into it. Now the first thing we're going to do is remove these headlights. We have two pull tabs, one here and one here. Simply lift these up. If it doesn't come out, you can kind of push it a little bit and wiggle it out, and that will release your headlight housing. Now coming into the headlight housing, we're going to have three lines to disconnect. One is going to be right here. Give it a quick twist, and it comes right out. Be careful with these bulbs. One's going to be here in the middle. Same thing, quick twist. And the last one's going to be here, same thing, quick twist. And it pulls right out. And it's going to be the same thing on the other side. Now, as we come into the empty headlight housing, you're going to see it does have some clips. There's going to be one right here, one right here. Mine is broken up there. You're going to have two right here, one and two. And then the same thing on the other side. You have one clip there, what is broken. Inside here, we're going to have one, two, and then we're going to have another one right in there. So now to get these clips off, you just give it a simple pull. And then the same thing on the other side. Now at this point, it's going to give us better access to our blinker bulbs. We're going to take this, same procedure, give it a twist, and pull it straight out. Same thing on the other side. And I'm definitely going to recommend taking your bulbs, getting a zip tie, and putting them in the corner all nice and pretty. Now with our lights out of the way, we can pull this front grill right off. And now that we've got the grill off, we're going to zoom right in here. And hopefully your situation with the rust is not as bad as mine. So we're going to take this bolt off here. Now at this point, for more older Chevys like 94, 95, 96, 97, the high and low outlets for your condenser are going to be around right here. Now for the newer Chevy models, this is a 2001 for an example. What you're going to need to do is pull the radiator, so let's get right into that. Alright, so we got one, two, three 10 millimeter bolts holding in our fan shroud. And then we're going to have two bolts on each side coming through here. Well, we're missing one. We got one there, and then we got two there. Then we should be able to pull this right out. And now it's time to go under the car, right here by our front right tire. We're going to have this little lever, if you twist it you'll see, it'll start to drain the radiator fluid. So we're going to get a catch pan, throw our catch pan under, and turn the lever. To speed up the process, be sure to open the cap. So now that we're all drip dry, we're going to close this valve. We're going to remove our first hose clamp here on the radiator. Now right under the radiator hose we removed, there's going to be your oil cooler line here. We're going to be removing that next. Now you're also going to have your return line for your oil cooler right there. 
what you're going to need to do is pull the bottom of your fan cover off to the side, pick your radiator up a little bit, and give you some room to fit a wrench in there. Now that we've got those undone, we're going to move over to the left side of our radiator. And we're going to have our transmission cooler here on this side. Another hose clamp behind it. And then a return line for our transmission cooler as well. And we're going to start here by removing our transmission cooler line. And right under that line we have our hose clamp down here. Pull this guy up so you don't drip out any unnecessary fluids. And last thing to remove, we're going to have our transmission cooler return line right there. So same thing, take a wrench, and then you pull your radiator straight out. And also be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're finding the video helpful. So now with our radiator out of the way, we have a beautiful workspace here. So what we're going to have is a little bolt here that we're going to be taking off. And on the other side, it's going to be the exact same thing here. I'm going to start here by removing the right one. And then we're going to move on to the mounting bracket on the other side. Now the last thing we're going to need to remove to get our condenser out is behind this little flap. We're going to have two nuts there. And then right here, we're going to have this bracket holding in our condenser to these lines. Now, once everything's said and done, you will need to properly refill your AC system with oil and everything. I'm going to have a video I'm going to put right here on how to properly fill up your AC system after you replace a part. So I'm going to start with the two bolts going to the condenser. And then these last two bolts here on the high and low pressure line. Now we're going to take our wrenches and fit them on our AC lines. Give them a good crank. And here goes the low pressure line. So now we're going to take this plastic flap, move it over the side. That way our condenser lines are free to move around. And now that we got the condenser out, I want to show you guys, this one actually does come with a bracket. It is riveted in, so you can't undo it. So this old bracket, you can go ahead and throw it in your scrap pile. Now this one I got did come on Amazon. I will put a link in the description. If you guys want to click on that link and buy it here for my link, it actually helps me out a little bit. And I would really appreciate it. Now a few quick things before you just slam the new condenser in there. You want to take these off, because it's definitely going to be easier to take these off while it's on the ground as opposed to in the car. And you hear how the pressure came out of it? That way you know there's no leaks in your new condenser before you install it. They do pull vacuum on these to keep all the moisture out of the system. So if you don't hear that suction noise, it's no good. Send it back, get a new one. That way you don't have to do this job again. Now another important thing to note here, with your bracket, you want to make sure that it is tucked in right here in this corner. So you pull this guy apart a little bit, and you're going to slide it right there in that corner. And this part here is where you secure it to the vehicle to keep it nice and stable. And also, if we come down here, you're going to see there is a little piece of rubber that the condenser slides right here in this gap. Now, mine have seen better days, obviously, especially this one. Make sure they don't fall out because sometimes they can actually fall out when you pull the condenser out. So be sure they're in there before you slam the new one in. Another thing as well, be sure you check your gaskets here on your low pressure line and your high pressure line just to make sure everything is looking good. Mine are looking pretty fresh. There's no cracks, there's no rips, there's no tears. So now that we checked our gaskets, we made sure our rubber is in place on the bottom. We put our mounting brackets here on the top of the condenser and made sure when we took these off that there was still vacuum pressure here in the condenser. Now we are ready to go. So now we're gonna take our ready to go condenser and we're gonna put it in the vehicle. Now before I secure the condenser, what I'm gonna do is plug in my high pressure line because this is the hardest one to get to. And then we're going to move on to our low pressure line. 
Now once your condenser is properly seated, we're going to start by screwing in the brackets. Now I wasn't going to film this part, but I decided to anyway, so I hooked my manifold gauges up to the system. I sprayed air in there with a rubber tip with an air compressor stuck here in the bottom, and then turned this off and sealed the system to make sure there was no leaks. Now I know I already checked the condenser and I knew that was leaking. I also changed the evaporator here in this truck, so I know it wasn't the evaporator. The dryer's new. The compressor's pretty new. So now that the system had a bunch of compressed air in it, I sprayed it up with some soapy water, and I found out the leak was... Da, 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 right here in this fitting. You see it's blowing bubbles. So it's good practice taking from someone like me who's done a lot of AC work and dealt with a lot of leaks. So I'm going to tighten these little bubble blowers up, and we'll get right back to the video. Now with our new condenser fully installed and mounted, it's time to put our radiator back in. You want to make sure that you don't bend any metal lines like your oil cooler and transmission cooler lines. Right here. So we're going to start out with this transmission line right here, and then we're going to move up to this coolant hose right here, and then we're going to come all the way up with our second transmission line right here. Now you definitely want to push your fan cover here out of the way, give you enough room to crank down your transmission line. Now we're going to take our coolant hose we have tucked away here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the coolant hose to the side. I'm going to take my locking pliers here with this hose clamp, put my hose back on, unlock my locking pliers, and we are in. We have our last line to connect here. Pull these out of the way for you. And we're going to hook up our last transmission line to the transmission cooler. And don't forget your overflow line here. Now that's going to wrap everything up on the right side. It's time to move over to the left side. Now again, we're going to be doing the same thing here. We're going to start with this bottom hose. And then we're going to work our way up to this one here. And then once we get those two, we're hooking up our coolant hose. And now the top line. And then we're going to hook up our coolant hose. And now we're going to take our fan cover, put it back on, and be sure when you bend these lines here to be careful because these are the AC lines. We just did AC work, so we don't want to create any leaks. Now we're going to secure our fan cover with these three 10 millimeter bolts. And then moving back down here, we do have two more bolts that secure the bottom of the fan cover to the top part. And this is on both sides. And the last thing to do is fill up your radiator and put your cap back on. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that little thumbs up button. It really helps me out more than you guys know. And also, definitely consider subscribing. I put some videos here that are pretty cool that I'm hoping you guys will enjoy. So check my channel out and see if it's something you'd like. Have a good one, guys.